The Jar series of cards in Yu-Gi-Oh are primarily made up of one-eyed, sinisterly grinning flip monsters of a variety of attributes and types. When people think of the Jar series of cards, they tend to associate it with the greed archetype, mainly because both series tend to have a creepy smile plastered somewhere on their card artworks. As well, the trap card Jar of Greed seems to act as a bridge between the two series. Despite this damning evidence though, Jar of Greed is isn't actually a part of the Jar series, since in the Japanese, the Jar cards are instead called pods. Wait, okay, that makes it sound a bit closer resembled, but they're actually not related. And if being completely honest, not all of the Jars are called pods in the Japanese. For example, Morphing Jar, it's called Metamore Pot, so I guess that's a bit more confusing. But wait a second, let me just elaborate a bit more. There is actually a criteria we can use to solve this issue. A real jar card will meet most of this criteria. It will be a flip effect monster. It will have the word pod in its Japanese name and it will have some kind of creepy face on it. Speaking of those sinister smiles, they are not something you should ever take lightly, as when you see its grinning face glaring up at you in a duel, it means this card has been flipped up, smirking because it knows something very bad is about to happen. What is that? Now people tend to think of cards like Exodia the Forbidden One as an example of one of the most powerful sets of cards in the Yu-Gi-Oh game. And for good reason too. Exodia has the ability when all its parts are brought together to instantly win its user the duel. A fact that is reflected in its treatment on the Forbidden and Limited lists. Exodia, throughout almost its entire life cycle, has been on the ban list, having each of its limbs limited to one. Which proves that Exodia's power has to be sealed to some degree. However, what if I told you that the majority of the Jar cards wield such destructive powers that out of the eight main Jar effect monsters monsters currently released, 50% of them are on the ban list. And these cards aren't just limited to one. Their strength is so disruptive to the game, they have been outright banned because of their power. So the question then becomes, what kind of powers do these jars house to have got themselves on the ban list? Well, let's find out together, starting with one of the most iconic members, Morphing Jar known in the Japanese as Metamore Pot. Its effect is flip effect, both players discard their entire hands, then draw five cards. Morphing Jar was the first of the jars to be released in its homeland of Japan. It debuted in 1999's Booster Pack 5, which was only attainable from a card ass vending machine. These vending machines would ask for 200 yen, roughly equivalent to about £1.37. After you put your money in, you would then turn the mechanism and you would receive a random card. Interestingly, after doing some research, quite a few different types of these machines still exist to this day. Though inflation, of course, seems to have kicked in as those very same machines now charge 500 yen, which is equivalent to like £3.42, £3.50. Woofed. I mean, if we've brought up the topic of inflation, remember when Fredo the Frogs were 10p? They're 25p now! What happened? If you would like to know if you have one of these Booster 5 cards, or really any old Yu-Gi-Oh card, the best way to check is to see if there is an Eye of Anubis hologram on the corner of the card, as back in the day, they didn't actually have this. So if you look at one of your old cards and they don't have the Eye of Anubis hologram, then it either means one of two things. It's really old, or really fake. It's 50-50 really. Internationally though, Morphing Jar was released in 2005's Dark Beginning 2, making it the first effect jar monster to be released. However, it was the second jar card if you count the non-effect monster variant of it, which we'll talk about a bit later. However, despite the fact it wasn't first internationally, I would still consider the Morphing Jar to be the actual face of the entire jar series. <laughs> Do you like what I did there? Because it's got a face. Ah! Anyway, if we look at the card's artwork, we can see that it solidifies an old ancient warning we must all adhere to even to this day, which is <coughs> Don't put your hands in things you know not what of is inside, lest the meet a fate worse than death.
Morphing Jar does resemble a creature from some fantasy games, which many people know as Mimics. Mimics disguise themselves as objects of lust, usually as a treasure chest to lure greedy adventurers in. The idea behind them is that when the adventurer reaches inside to claim their prize, we can see this being reflected by this monster as well as the other flip monsters, as they hide themselves as seemingly just ordinary defensive monsters. However, when an enemy creature attacks them, they spring to life with a very nasty effect to surprise them. In fact, I think it's about time we talk about this monster's effect. Due to its effect, Morphing Jar currently sits on the limited section of the ban list. However, despite the fact it is limited to one now, Morphing Jar has spent some considerable time being banned. But why was it banned? Now, this isn't my area of expertise, but it's probably a fear of a zero turn kill deck. For example, something like Empty Jar's deck out strategy, or Jackpot 7 being combined with this monster for an instant win. Regardless of all that though, just having a card that lets you completely restock your hand back to 5 just off of one card could be seen as a little bit too overpowered to run too many of. Imagine having three of this card in your deck. Cyber Jar, known in the Japanese as Cyber Pod. Its effect is Flip Effect. Destroy all monsters on the field. Then both players reveal the top five cards from their decks. Then special summon all revealed level four or lower monsters in face of attack position or face down defense position. Also add any remaining cards to their hand. If either player has less than five cards in their deck, reveal as many as possible. Possible. Heavily resembling Star Wars' Death Star, and in fact even firing a laser in a similar fashion to it in the anime, Cyberchar was first released in 2004's Dark Beginning 1 in the TCG, and the year 2000's Pharaoh's Servant set in the OCG. Now, before we can talk about this card, we first need to address the elephants in the room. One, this card is in no way affiliated with the Cyber Dragon archetype. And two, despite this monster having the word Cyber in its name, and the monster's whole aesthetic, is geared towards machinery, it is in fact not a machine type monster, it's a rock type. This wouldn't be so bad, but Bandit Keith does actually refer to this monster as a machine type in the anime. This machine card destroys every monster on the field! But why was this monster banned? Well, it's pretty self-explanatory. Its effect is simply insane. It is a combination of Dark Hole, as it nukes the entire field. It has the ability of, say, something like Inferno Reckless Summon, but with, like, no cost, and it can use monsters from the deck instead. As well, any card that can't be summoned can be added to the hand as well. It makes me curious though with this monster, should Cyberjar ever see a comeback like nowadays? The reason against this decision would be the fact that Link monsters are so heavy in the game at the moment, and I imagine pretty much everyone would be playing this monster for the free materials on the field. However, a positive of today's game against the Jars is the abundance of hand traps, cards that can negate effects straight from the hand on the field after they've been used. Guys, I'll pose that question to all of you. Should any of these Jars be taken off the ban list? Let me know which ones you think and why. Fiber Jar, known in the Japanese as Fiber Pod. Its effect is Flip Effect. Each player shuffles all cards from their hand, field, and graveyard into the deck. Then, draw five cards. Fiber Jar was released in 2001 in the OCG's Mythological Age set, while it was released in the TCG in Legacy of Darkness in 2004. I'm gonna be honest, I feel like I didn't make a big enough deal about this monster's effect, but let's just repeat it one more time. Each player shuffles all cards from their hand, field, and graveyard back into their deck, and then draws five cards. Oh my god. Needless to say, Fiber Jar is broken since it can keep putting everything back into the deck, even itself, meaning a duel could last a literal eternity. So, in my opinion, this one can stay on the ban list till the end of time for all I care. Now, if we look at the monster's artwork, if Morphing Jar is a mimic, Cyber Jar is the Death Star, then what is Fiber Jar? Well, it actually resembles the ancient ruins of Laputa from Studio Ghibli's Castle in the Sky film. They even both share a giant cannon at their bases. In fact, it was actually used in the anime once by Joey Wheeler in episode 153. However, when he used it against my Valentine, before Joey could trigger its effect, Mai used her Harpy's Feather Storm to negate that effect and end the battle phase. 
Unlucky, Joey. Morphing jar number two, known in the Japanese as Chaos Pod. Its effect is Flip Effect. Shuffle all monsters on the field into the deck. Then each player excavates cards from the top of their deck until they excavate the same number of monsters they shuffled into their main deck. Special Summon all excavated level four or lower monsters in face down defense position. Also send the remaining cards to the graveyard. Released in the year 2000 in Curse of Anubis in the OCG, then again in Dark Beginning 1 in the TCG, this card is the last of the jar cards to be a member of the Forbidden and Limited list, and is also the one with the strangest OCG to TCG name change. While completely separate in effect to Morphing Jar, weirdly they called it Morphing Jar number two. This must have had a much better name in the Japanese as well of Chaos Pod. Maybe Chaos Jar would have been a much better name, in my opinion, or would that have clashed with like other Chaos Monsters? Regardless, the reason why this card might have been banned was to stop the abuse of deck out decks, which is the reason why Morphing Jar was limited to one as well. I guess this could be a little nod from the developers being like, oh no, we've got another Morphing Jar here. A morphing jar number two, if you will. I wonder if we could ever see a comeback of this card, or all of them, if they added the hard once per turn to each of their effects, because that is the problem with these cards. The fact that you have cards like Book of Tayo, Book of Moon, to flip up and flip down monsters can keep reusing some flip effect monsters' abilities. So maybe if it was a, just a hard once per turn, we could see them come back. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, and last thing about this monster, you can see it in the anime exclusive card artwork of Release Change. Right then, let's get to the jars that aren't on the Forbidden Unlimited list, shall we? First we have Dice Jar, known in the Japanese as Dice Pot. Its effect is Flip Effect. Both players roll a six-sided die. The player with the lowest result takes damage equal to their opponent's roll times 500. However, if the winner rolled a six, the loser takes 6,000 damage. If the rolls are the same, both players roll again. Released in Pharaonic Guardian in the OCG back in 2002, and then three years later in the TCG's Dark Beginning 2, this card feels like it almost could have been on the ban list, being able to deal a massive 6,000 damage to a player, which, keep in mind, is the highest fixed damage a card in Yu-Gi-Oh! is capable of doing. Though, of course, the biggest crux of this monster is the fact that it could very easily wipe out your own life points no sooner than your opponent's. Then again, for a couple dice re-rolls in the deck, maybe you can get past it. Now the monster itself is based on a dice cup shaker, typically one used for gambling, so that the roll itself isn't being interfered with by the holder of the dice. And this monster appears in the artwork of Release Change alongside Morphing Jar number two. Absorbing Jar, known in the Japanese as Absorb Pod. Its effect is Flip Effect, destroy all set, spell and trap cards on the field. Then each player draws one card for each of the cards they controlled that was destroyed by this effect. You cannot set any cards this turn. Absorbing Jar was the first Jar card to be released in the OCG and TCG within the same year, only separated by two months. It came out in Galactic Overlord as a rare in both sets. Absorbing Jar seems to be a watered down counterpart to Cyber Jar. Both look mechanical in appearance. Cyber Jar destroys all monsters on the field, while Absorbing Jar destroys all set spell and trap cards on the field. And while Cyber Jar lets you pick up five cards and summon the monsters, Absorbing Jar lets you draw cards equivalent to the cards sent, but you can't set any of those cards the same turn. So it seems to have a similar but opposite kind of effect to it. In fact, if we look at the base of the monster, it even resembles that of Cyber Jar 2. Cobra Jar, known in the Japanese as Snake Pot. Its effect is Flip Effect, Special Summon 1 Poisonous Snake Token, Reptile Type, Earth, 3 Stars, Attack 1200, Defense 1200. When the Poisonous Snake Token is destroyed as a result of battle, inflict 500 points of damage to your opponent's life points. Released in 2002 in the OCG's The New Ruler and later in the TCG's 2005 set Dark Revelation Volume 1, Cobra Jar actually has only been released in two sets in the TCG in its entirety, so you'll pretty much only ever see the card's unique numbers starting with DR1 or PGD. Dimension Jar, known in the Japanese as Dimension Pod. Its effect is Flip Effect. Both players can remove from play up to three monsters from their opponent's graveyard. Released in the OCG in 2002's Advent of Union and in the TCG's Dark Revelation Volume 1 in 2005, this monster appears to be an opened Tesseract, or what some would call a hypercube. It is basically a four-dimensional form of a cube. 
You might also know the word Tesseract from a certain Marvel franchise. Now, if we couple the fact that this card is based on a four-dimensional form of a cube, as well as with this monster's effect, it makes the name a double pun, as it is a shape with more than three dimensions, and the fact that it shows a fourth open dimension could all be a reference to the Yu-Gi-Oh mechanic of banishing monsters. So yeah, hence its effect. Pretty cool. Ancient Jar, known in the Japanese as Ancient Pot. Its flavor text reads, a very fragile jar that contains something ancient and dangerous. Ancient Jar has actually never been released in the TCG. It is in fact the first ever jar, or should we say pod, to be released though. If we go back to Morphing Jar, that came out in 1999's Booster 5, whereas Ancient Jar came out in Booster 1. It is the only normal jar monster that exists, and based on its artwork, it does seem to be one of the oldest looking cards in terms of its looks. Pot of the Forbidden. Its effect is Flip Effect. You can activate one of these effects. Draw two cards, return all spell and trap cards on the field to the hand, destroy all monsters your opponent controls, look at your opponent's hand, also shuffle one card from their hand into the deck. I know what you're all thinking, TGS, shouldn't this have been in the Pot of? archetype instead, as it has the word pot of in its name, it also has forbidden in its name, and it has no Japanese pod variant of it. And while yes, I do see where you're coming from, and its first ability is pretty much that of Pot of Greed's effect. However, the reason that we know this monster is a jar, despite its name, is because one, there is a sinister creepy ass looking face and single eye hidden within the pot, which matches the criteria, and two, it's a flip effect monster, making it actually one of the Dentist jars of them all, as it has an impressive 2,000 attack and 3,000 defense. In fact, it makes it the highest defense value of any flip effect monster so far in the Yu-Gi-Oh game. As a side note as well, this monster has inherited the powers of four of the deadliest Yu-Gi-Oh cards in the game, which all have been forbidden due to their power. We have its first effect, which is Pot of Greed. We have its second effect, which is Giant True Nade. We have its third effect, which is Raigeki, which... I guess it's unbanned now, but it has been banned. And we have its fourth effect, which is the Forceful Sentry. And finally, let's finish up with the non-official Jar cards that are basically only in this video because they contain the word Jar in their name. Now, they actually aren't a part of the Jar series, but let's just mention them anyway. We have Jar of Greed, Jar Turtle, Jar of Avarice, Jar Robber, Dragon Capture Jar, and Aroma Jar. And with that, guys, that's another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Trivia done! Let me know what you thought of the jar archetype, which is your favourite jar, I'd love to know. But before we end, I want to give a huge thank you and shout out to all of my supporters. Thank you first and foremost to my top platinum backers on Patreon, you know you do 97 Chowderman36, J24092, Spencer Davis. As well to my gold backers, thank you very much to Dylan Kunin, Zawolf18, Silver Defender, David Shanahan, Shogun and Chungming Zen. Thank you to everybody else who is supporting me on Patreon as well. Shout out to my two YouTube members, Reyes Sanchez and Shinjo CB. Guys, thank you all for keeping the lights on over here and thank you for directly supporting the channel. Uh, I really appreciate you all. Bye everyone!